Focus report. And this Friday, we look into a dark yet little known chapter of France and Cameroon's common history. In the 1950s and 60s, the French army fought alongside Cameroonian government forces against members of the leftist UPC movement, which it labelled as rebels. Historians say that during this little known war, tens of thousands of people were killed. France Vanquet talked to a crucial witness who saw massacres being committed. A report carried out in France and Cameroon by Nicolas Germain with Marcela Moko, Zigo Tuchaya, Melina Huet and Sylvain Rousseau. In a remote village in southwest France, this former French soldier took part in a war that few people, even in France, have heard of. One which has been described as the beginning of France-Afrique, the murky relationship between Paris and its former African colonies. Bardet was sent to Cameroon between 1962 and 1964 in the western Bamileke region. He was a helicopter pilot and witnessed several massacres committed by the Cameroonian army. It was strongly supported and funded by France. That's a Bell 47 G2, 280 horsepower, a very small helicopter, just three seats. The Cameroonian army, backed by France, targeted members of the UPC, a party that opposed President Amadou Aïdjo. The UPC believed that after independence in 1960, Aïdjo was simply France's hand-picked puppet. For the first time on television, Max Bardet describes the atrocities he saw. Soldiers of the Cameroonian army were ordered to kill the men, but not the women. Women would be left to agonize. Most had been wounded by AK-47 bullets, but not only that, what I want to say is that they would also cut off their breasts and disembowel them. During these massacres, Max Bardet was accompanied by a French officer. The officer who was with me was here to be on the lookout and make sure no one would witness what was going on, that no one could ever testify or accuse France and the few members of the French military still present in Cameroon of being involved in what was going on. Bardet says he understands why many Cameroonians remain bitter. If I were them, I would be angry with the French or with France. Yes, really, I would. A new book on this topic called The War in Cameroon has just come out in France. The French carried on with their military activities, albeit discreetly. They would manage or supervise operations rather than having a massive military presence on the ground. This way they could crack down on the UPC nationalists, that's the Union of Cameroonian People, but also on all those suspected of supporting this movement, the so-called subversive elements. This repression, this crackdown was so discreet it was like a secret operation. Indeed, back in France, no one was aware of the extent of these military operations. But not only were these operations off the radar, they were also extremely violent. In the 1960s, you had entire villages being destroyed in air raids. People were being forced into camps surrounded with barbed wire. Torture was becoming systematic. The revelations in this book come after those published in the first edition, and they could have legal and financial consequences for France. The French government is fully aware that the Mao Mao, a group that was violently repressed in Kenya in a similar way and at a similar time, sued the British government a few years ago and won compensations. Lawsuits are still being filed. So I think the French government wouldn't like to find itself in a similar position. But they're also worried of the conclusions that could be drawn from their implication in the war in Cameroon. Because beyond the violent repression, it was one of the cornerstones in building a very peculiar system of French governance not only in Cameroon, but in all of France's former colonies in Africa. So yes, if people start taking a closer look at what happened during this war, this is something deeply worrying for the French government. And this regardless of whether the government is on the left or on the right. In Cameroon, some still remember the massacres of the 1950s and 60s. Tadej Yemelon used to be the bodyguard of one of the UPC's leaders. In this war, there was no mercy. They bombed places and didn't care if women or children were living there. Tade Yemelon fought for many years in the Bamileke region against the French and Cameroonian armies. He was badly wounded. 
After we had been ambushed, I ran away and I fell in a hole. My wound was so bad I lost consciousness. Thankfully, someone carried me to the hospital. He doesn't regret his years in the movement. Better die standing than to live on your knees. France's official position is slowly evolving. In 2009, Prime Minister François Fillon said accusations that France had taken part in the killing of rebel leaders were pure inventions. Last year in Cameroon, François Hollande was the first French president to admit there had been a repression, but he didn't say what actions France had carried out. Now some Cameroonian NGOs want to ask for reparations from France for its role in this war. A discreet war, but one in which tens of thousands of people were killed, according to French and Cameroonian historians. Well, for more on this, I'm joined in the studio by Julie Owono, who heads the Africa Bureau at Internet Without Borders. Hello, thank you very much for being with us. Now, the notion of France Afrique has always uh, had a, a murky, worrying connotation, both uh, on the political and the military front. Is it time for the French public to see what's under that veil of secrecy, do you think? Absolutely. It was highly time uh, for such a secrecy to be lifted up uh, for two reasons. The first reason is that from a diplomatic perspective, relationship between France and Cameroon have always been very friendly and very warm, but from a non-institutional point of view, that is to say the, the Cameroonian citizens, Cameroonian civil society intellectuals, there is now a sort of suspicion between, against the French, uh, the France as a state. Uh, this suspicion was uh, expressed during François Hollande's trip in uh, Yaoundé a few years ago and was also expressed against the French ambassador in France, the former French ambassador in France, who was booed during a, a huge rally against Boko Haram by many uh, Cameroonian citizens. So that, that frustration t t totally, absolute, in my opinion, absolutely lies in the, in the secrecy of, uh, of the France Afrique, how the France Afrique was born. And it was mainly born uh, during the conflict that happened in Cameroon between 1955 and some say 1970 and others say 1962. Uh, and opening archives, opening, uh, you know, opening testimonies on what happened in, in that war, we certainly appeased the relationship and the, the the, the, the feeling, the sent, sentiments that uh, Cameroonian people and intellectuals might have against the French, uh, France as a state. And moreover, it's also very important for French citizens themselves. Uh, many of them don't understand and don't know what has been done in their name in certain of the former colonies' territories. And it's important today that with the age of information, with the fact that many people now have access to information that were kept, that were kept secret, uh, it's more and more difficult to hide these crimes. And uh, hopefully, yes, the, the, the reports that uh, François Nkan has done and the one uh, that François Nkan had done back in 2007 already, François Nkan being a French TV, uh, public TV channel, uh, also a book named Cameroon. All these documentaries have been very important and will see continue to be very important to open up the speech and the discourse on what really happened. And what I think is important is to, to move from the historical perspective, but now go to the legal perspective and know what 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 is legally uh, how legally those crimes can be named? We know that war crimes have been committed. Uh, this uh, there is this Max Vardet who apparently existed uh, because in the book Cameroon it was uh, the authors doubted that he he was a real a real. Um, army agent, uh, but he actually existed, and he all actually acknowledges and recognizes that he has committed war crimes. Now these war crimes are uh, fell under prescription, which is 30 years, so obviously they cannot be persecuted. But now there are other crimes that have been committed, uh, and specifically uh, the question is, whether a genocide has happened in Cameroon. I'm asking the question, and others have asked the question, following, uh, uh, you know, orders and following um, a publication by a general named General Lamberton, who is now dead, who was uh, supervising the operations in, the, in, in Cameroon, operations for pacification of Cameroon, as it, were, as it, were, it was called. Uh, and this general specifically says that the Bamileke people, which is a population in Western Cameroon, uh, is an ethnic minority, which is a problem in the pacification of Cameroon. So saying this, uh, ironically, most of the uh, war 
operation theater were located in locations where Baminike people had been identified. So legally, there is a question whether there was a, a physical element of a genocide, that is to say, uh, killing a, a group of people, and the mental element of a genocide, which is intentionally targeting an ethnic or a racial or a religious group within a country. So I think with the opening of these arch arches and with the opening of, I mean, with all these documentaries, these questions, these historic questions, questions will also be answered on the legal point of view. And uh, as you said, we are in an information age, and now that we're on, you know, revealing all this information, and it, it needs to be displayed and shared, uh, how is your organization helping with that? Well, uh, we are in favor of you know, an open internet, and we know that the open internet has dramatically changed the, the general speech that was uh, spread and disseminated when, it, when talking about colonization and the post-independence period in Africa. Uh, we are seeing today more and more uh, people questioning their states and in Cameroon for instance to go back to the to the country we are talking about uh, there is a movement now f uh, in favor of erasing all the signs of the colonial past in the public space in Cameroon uh, for instance there were there is a the, the statue of General Leclerc which was destroyed by a militant who was later arrested uh, and jailed for a certain amount of time same in South Africa in South Africa we remember the, the roads must fall uh, rally and campaign which uh, eventually ended up uh, bringing down the, the, the statue of, um, of Rhodes. So I think the, the information aid and the openness of the Internet, the ability to have access to certain documents that have been kept secret for uh, such a long time, obviously uh, allows this type of discussion today. We, I, I doubt that five years ago we'd have discussed this on France 24, uh, a, a subject as uh, a war in Cameroon on France 24. So. Thank you very much for having spoken to us Thank on you. behalf of the Internet Without Borders.